Heather Lindsay Show. Now this show is so exciting because we're talking about traveling on a budget. Who likes to travel for like pretty much free, right? So my guests are amazing. I mean, I, I have um, Dime Johnson and Priscilla Smiley, and um, these ladies are known for traveling for next to nothing. So I am literally, we were talking before we started, and um, Dime said that she, you know, bought a flight for, she's traveling home tomorrow for $5.60. Yeah, yeah. And I was just telling her how I just feel offended about that, because I need to know your secrets. So let's start with you. First, how did you get started into traveling for Almost Free, and share some of your secrets? Okay. Um, I grew up traveling with my family. We travel, like, almost every month, sometimes, like, twice in a month, like, all the time. So when I went away to college, I wanted to keep traveling, but like I didn't have a lot of money because I was pampered by myself. And my friends were like, I can only spend this much money on traveling. So if I wanted it to go with them or if I wanted to go, like we needed to find a way to travel like that we could afford. So we started like Googling different stuff. Um, we would like drive to places that are really close. We would look up like um, close airports near us. So like maybe our home airport <laughs> was flying for like um, $600. But if we drove maybe like an hour, we could fly for like, a third of the price so then I was like okay we can start doing that as long as it's not like too far or we're not spending too much in gas like if it works out that way then like drive somewhere closer fly for less um so yeah and then um one day I was walking through the airport I don't remember where I was going but I was walking through the airport and I saw like a credit card and they're like sign up for this and you get like 50,000 points and that will equate to like this many flights so I was like okay I'll try that and then that's how I got like started with um flying for really cheap so I flew here for like forty dollars, and I'm gonna fly back home tomorrow for five dollars and sixty cents. That's amazing. So, so that in particular used points miles. Um, for the forty dollars, no, I just found that flight, and going back home tomorrow, yes, I am gonna use points. So I just gotta pay like the security fee and like taxes on it. So like five dollars and sixty cents. That is crazy. How come <laughs> I never see forty dollar flights when I'm looking? Like this is okay. We're gonna get to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So your turn, Priscilla. You are known as a savvy traveler. Okay, so tell me how you got started and all the other good stuff. Yes, I am known as the savvy traveler. I did not grow up traveling. I was raised in a single parent household, so finances was always limited. However, when I became an adult, I had the desire to travel, and once I obtained my first employment, I just started traveling, and it was kind of like an addiction. <laughs> it was like I tasted it. I loved it. I enjoyed it, and I continued doing it. So from that one experience, uh, my first major trip was going abroad. It was going to Europe. From that point on, it was like every single year I had to go somewhere. So that's what sparked the passion and desire for me to start traveling, just getting out there and doing it. That is awesome. And here's some photos of them, as you see on your screen. You can see um, that is amazing. So so walk me through it. Okay, say say I want to go to Hawaii in September. All right, which I want to go to Hawaii in September. Husband, if you're watching, make that happen. But um, so tell me this. Like, w walk me through that process. Like, would you wait to a certain day? Is there a certain day that it's best to book? Is there certain websites that you go on? Okay, I like to use my three P's of traveling, which are paper, plastic, and purchase. So kind of like Dime, what she was saying, you definitely want to take advantage of any type of rewards cards that's going to offer you points. So I'm always redeeming my points. So if you have points, you can definitely book you a flight for a little to nothing. Um, always travel off season. So September, I'm not really sure if that's the peak season or off season, but if you go off season, you're guaranteed to get a better deal. I like traveling midweek, so if you have flexibility, if you travel Wednesday, Saturday, you're going to get a better deal if you travel on the weekend or on a Monday or Tuesday. And Tuesday is a really great day to look for flight deals, especially Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Never wait till Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday night because a lot of times I've learned when airline companies, they release fares, it's for a limited amount of seats. And if you get it in the morning time, then you have that availability. But if you wait towards the end of the day, that availability might be gone. That's a really good tip. I remember one time I was supposed to go to a friend's wedding in St. Thomas, and it was like a week before her wedding. And the Lord told me that, you know, I was going. And I'm like, well, how? Because I don't have my flight. And I kept looking at flights. Mm -hmm. And they were like eight, $900. And this mm -hmm. was years ago. This is before I even knew any better. And the flights were, honestly, I think they were around 1100 to go there. And I was like, nope, that's not in the budget. It looks like I'm not going to make it. And I was like, I just must have not heard the Lord, you know. And so I remember he woke me up at like 3 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. I remember it was a Tuesday mm -hmm. morning. He woke me up at 3 a.m. And he told me, he woke me up and he said, book your flight. And I was like, what? Hold on. 
did you just wake me up and tell me to book my flight? Well, shoot, let me check. <laughs> so I went and got my laptop laptop out, and it was like three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I was shocked. I saved, I mean, almost what eight nine hundred dollars mm-hmm. by shopping that Tuesday morning. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, what about you? Tell me about you. Um, what what would you say if I want to leave? You know, I want to go on a trip. Like, what's the thought process in your head? Okay, so if um, I was going to plan a trip to Hawaii in September, the very first site I would go to, well, actually, there's two. Usually, I go to Google Flights because it shows, like, the prices of, like, each day. So, it gives so me, Google like... Google Flights. Uh-huh, account. Google Flights. You can just search it on Google, just like Google Flights. Um, and it'll show you, like, each day. And it'll show you, like, the price. It'll tell you, like, if it's lower on this day or, like, if it's higher to come back on this day. So, like, lets you choose, like, you got to have a little bit of flexibility. So, it'll, like, show you when to go, when not to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that is Kiwi.com. And that one is the best because That's like... K-I-W-I. Yep, K-I-W-I.com. That one is my favorite because it like... Usually like airlines, they want you to like book there and back with the same like airline. But um, this one, it'll like let you go there with one then come back with the other. Mm-hmm. So it gives you a little flexibility. So like one airline might be cheaper going there, but then that one might not be the cheapest coming back. So like Kiwi.com, it'll show you that. It'll show you which is the cheapest. And then it'll also show you like the flexibility on the dates. Like it was maybe like $50 on this day, but it may be like 170 the next day. So you just got to have a little a flexibility tip. and it'll show you that on there. That's so, a good yeah. tip. So with your flight coming here, you said you paid $40, but you booked that online. Yeah, I booked it online maybe like a few days in advance. So like not even like way in advance. I just booked it. And I probably could have got it a lot cheaper if I would have did it like further in advance. So Wait, okay. Did you go on <laughs> Kiwi.com? No, I actually just, um, I went on Google Flights and it showed me that Spirit was the cheapest. And I know a lot of people don't like budget airlines, but like they're the best because they show you what they're going to charge you and what they're not going to charge you and what they're going to give you and what they're not going to give you. So people are like, oh, I can't go with Spirit because they're going to charge me for a bag. But I didn't pay for a bag coming here. I brought my Vera Bradley bag and I like stuffed it right under my seat. Right. So that's funny. My assistant, um, Juliet, always says um, for Spirit Airlines, she says, Holy Spirit, you're welcome <laughs> here because I'm going to need him to get to my destination. <laughs> so, amen. Amen. No, that's awesome. So, which one of you booked um, a five star? Was it you that booked a five star? Five star Star Hotel for fifty dollars a night. Oh no, that was me and okay, my friend so, to Mexico. Actually, okay, explain. How does um, we went on Hotwire. So, and I usually don't like to do stuff like that because I want to know where I'm gonna go. But she's like, no, let's just go on Hotwire. So we did. Um, and I was kind of like skeptical about it because I like to know where I'm gonna go and where I'm gonna stay. Um, so we did it, and like this place because it shows you like an outline of like the area. Um, if it's like a four star, you want to pick pick places that have like an eighty percent rating or higher. So I was like, okay, we could try that. So um, it showed us the area, like other hotels nearby. It gives you a comparison. It'll say like, oh, this one is like the Hilton or this one is like so-and-so. Um, so we kind of Googled it to see like what other hotels were in the area to kind of get an idea of what we were going to get. But that one didn't even come up. So once it came up, it was a Marriott and it was so nice. Um, we were only supposed to have like a garden view room, but when we got there, they ended up like upgrading us to beachfront and everything. So That's amazing. Yeah. That is so cool. Um, my husband is like the guru at this. I remember we were in Dubai probably a couple months ago and we we're doing ministry. Um, and I remember we were exhausted and we were very tired. We were jet lagged. We have kids. So we're, we were, I remember we were at the Atlantis hotel and we were waiting for our room and our room wasn't ready, but the other room that we had for my mother-in-law was ready. So we were just hanging out in her room and, um, they kept saying, Oh, your room would be ready in five minutes. Oh, your room would be ready in 10 minutes. They, and we kept going down there like, Hey, where's our room? So then my husband, um, I just started to drift off to sleep because I was so exhausted from the jet lag. He goes downstairs and he comes back up and he said, the room's ready. And I was like, you just told me the room wasn't going to be ready for two hours, babe. He's like, nope, it's ready. So I was like, all right. I mean, I'm dragging myself down the hallway and I'm just so sleepy. I walk in and it's this huge suite. I mean, it's massive. It's about as big as the studio. It's huge. And I was so shocked. And I'm like, we didn't book or pay for this room. How did we get it? Just ask for it what? So pretty much he went down there and said, you know, Hey, you know, my family's really exhausted, really tired. They keep saying they're going to give us rooms. And you know, I have, you know, a one year old and a a three year old. We're just really tired. So he told them that a manager came and was like, I am sorry for your inconvenience. Let me give you one of our penthouse suites. What? And that's the thing. That's the favor of God. I believe, I believe that. (laughs) But I I said to my husband, I'm like, what did you say? And he's like, well, you have not because you asked not. Mm-hmm. And when we go to those hotels, one of the number one things that we always do is say, hey, is there any upgrades available? And there's nothing wrong with asking for upgrades. Now they might you know, say, hey, you're, you know, we're going to charge you. But another tip that I've learned is that 
if you have rewards points mm -hmm. with that hotel, so say you're staying at like a Westin and it's a Starwood. So if you sign up for a Starwood point to say, oh, you're a Starwoods member, let me upgrade you. Yes, I think that you mm -hmm. should too. You know what I mean? So they, it shows them that, you know what, they're committed to us. So let me do something nice for them. So I think those are all really good tips. Um, now tell me, um, Priscilla, what is your absolute best deal that you've gotten? Absolute best deal was when I went to Japan. I redeemed my points and I paid seventy one dollars round trip. But that wow. was like a multi city flight. So I left from the US going to Japan. Then I went to Hong Kong and then I came back to the US. So doing multi city makes it cheaper too. That's yes. another tip. Mm -hmm. So if you have, okay, so if people are watching right now, they're saying, okay, I hear what you're saying, Priscilla, but mm -hmm. I work a nine to five, so I'm not flexible. So mm -hmm. what would you say to somebody that feels like, I can't do multi-city, I just need to go to Japan and come back to America? It's possible. You can definitely do that. Um, I will always say, if you have a desire to travel, go ahead and do it because tomorrow's not promised. You never know what's going to happen. So if God's placed that desire in your heart to travel the world, do it. And don't allow the finances to stop you. Sign up from, for someone's rewards program, start putting money aside, create a budget, and just do it. And if you want to go round trip to Japan, remember, Tuesday morning is the best day to look. <laughs> you better wake up early. Everybody's going to be up Tuesday at like 3 a.m. <laughs> No, I love that. Um, there's this one website that I'm always like kind of stalking, and I'm going to share it. It's called secrettravel.com. Mm -hmm. I just got an email from them. I follow them on Instagram too, um, and I also follow you know their 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 blog. But they note all of the best times to travel. Have you guys heard of that website mm -hmm. before? Mm -hmm. So pretty much this morning, I got an email saying if you want to go to Venice, uh, I'm sorry, if you want to go to Italy from Atlanta round trip, three hundred and twenty six dollars. Right. That's what I said. I was like, Ooh. and then they also post the air. Like if there's like a, um, an error in the flights, mm -hmm. they post it so you can get the flight for just a couple dollars mm -hmm. and they may or may not honor it. You never know. I'm not going to say that that's the right thing to do. Just be led by the Lord. But I mean, um, I think it's really cool because now I'm, you know, married. I have children. I can't just like get up and just jump and go. So if you're single, like, we really have no excuse not to travel the world and, and do all those different things. And it's cool because the Lord will give you wisdom. And that's what I tell people. Um, what do you think about credit cards? Because sometimes people are saying, okay, I don't like credit cards. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do credit cards. And I don't, you know, have enough. You got to spend money on the card to get the point. So right. what would you say about that? I really think it's about changing your mindset. Because a lot of my friends, they don't like credit cards. However, you have to purchase your gas. You have to purchase your food. Why not sign up for the right credit card that's going to offer you travel perks? Mm -hmm. It's all about just changing your mindset. Don't overspend because you know whatever you spend, you do have to pay off. But just think of it differently. Okay, now allow, let me allow my credit card to work for me. So when I purchase those everyday purchases or make those everyday purchases, I'm going to earn something in return that I can redeem for my flights or my hotels or something like that. That's a really good point. Um, whenever I tell people that, you know, I actually wrote a blog, How to Travel the World for Free, mm -hmm. and I shared some of my favorite tips, but some people were saying, you know, you have a business, so you have to buy a lot of things. True, but I also put like things like my life insurance. Mm -hmm. My cable is on those reward points. Um, so I think it's good for all of us to go through and check and say, okay, what are the best reward points um, credit cards that are out there that have low interest rates. And my American Express cards have zero interest rate because I have to pay it off within 30 days. So I put groceries, food. I mean, we put everything on those cards and we look up in 30 days and we pay it off. But now we have points that we use to pay for our family trips. Right. So if you're going to do it anyways, you mm. know, but if, again, if you're struggling with, you know, overspending, that might not be the route for you. You know, you might need to go on, um, I know there's Priceline. Have you ever tried Priceline? Yeah. Where you named your own price? Tell me about that experience. Um, I don't use it too often because they don't let you choose like what time the flight is going to be. So you may get like a 30 hour layover. Whoa. So, um, you just, I know you go on the website, um, you tell them where you want to go, what days you want to leave and they will give you like an express deal and it'll show you, um, like the lowest price leaving from that area. But it's good if you are starting out, but I kind of choose not to do it because I want to know like when I'm going to leave, especially if I'm like time constrained, like if I'm going to like a wedding, I want to make sure that I'm getting there in time for it. But yeah. No, that makes sense. I've tried to use Priceline before. My friend tried to use it recently for a trip we went on and they put her in a really bad hotel and you're stuck. I mean, you've already paid for it. So yeah. I like the other website that you used that didn't do that. What was that? Was it Expedia? 
Kiwi. Oh, Kiwi. It was uh-huh. Kiwi. Yes. Oh, never and Hotwire. Hotwire. And Hotwire. Uh-huh. I need to try those. Those are really good. Okay, so tell me what you think about Airbnb. I know this is big craze with so many people using Airbnb, and it's where you're essentially renting out somebody else's place. Now, my niece, Danielle, just went somewhere, and she rented out somebody's, um, you know, apartment, but she's like, this is very lived in. Like, look, here's her toothbrush. Like, she was showing me photos. It was very lived in, but some people are doing that. What are you guys' thoughts on saving costs when you get there by using Airbnb, and have you guys used it? I absolutely love Airbnb. I recently went to Cuba, and I can't fathom staying in a hotel. To me, Airbnb is a way of saving money, especially if you're traveling with a group. Now, what I do like about Airbnb is I can uh, write them a review, and they can write me a review as well. So if they're advertising that their house is clean or up to date and is not, you can write them a review. That's really good. And they don't want to get a bad review, obviously. They do not. So... <laughs> What about you? Have you used Airbnb? And what yeah, I love Airbnb. I actually have like a $40 off code if you use it for your first time on my website but um, from dimewithlove.com. But um, I love Airbnb. It's the first thing I go to. Like, it's my first choice. If I can't find anything, like, then I'll go to like hotels.com or booking.com. But Airbnb is always my first choice because they have pictures on there so I know like what it actually looks like. So it's not like you go on a hotel website and they show you stock photos so you don't really know if it's going to look like that. But um, it shows me like exactly what the pictures look like. I can read the reviews. I always read the reviews. And if I see one bad one, I'm like, I'm not staying there because I don't want to risk it. But um, yeah, you can read the reviews, look at pictures. It shows you like the area. Um, and some of the um, hosts are really nice. Like I stayed in one. They wrote down like all of their favorite restaurants nearby, like their favorite food, like fun things to do in the area. So yeah. So what about transportation? When you guys get there what do you guys usually do um if I drive then I'll just use my car but if I'm like like when I was in Paris like if I want to save money I just do what the locals do Mm -hmm. so I bought like a um, train pass so I was like taking the train I was taking the bus I was even walking like I just use whatever the locals use sometimes like the Airbnb hosts are really nice and they'll like have a driver for you and they'll like drive you around so but yeah that's amazing Mm -hmm. I agree I also travel like the locals so public transportation it is because after a while the taxis add up and you're not really saving as much you're spending a lot more money so if you don't mind walking just remember bring walking shoes (laughs) you can definitely save you some money so traveling like a local is a plus but amen I think that's good um whenever I travel um with my family and stuff I love Airbnb but um it doesn't really work Personally, for my family, when we're all going to certain places together, the four of us, sometimes we like room service at like three o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? And with Airbnb, you got to cook your own food, which is good and cost effective. But sometimes if you're traveling so much, you're not trying to cook your own food. I mean, you're tired. But um, what I like to do is I like to go to the actual website of the hotel. So if I'm, say you're staying at a Westin, instead of going to hotels.com, which I know is also good, I've compared it before by going um, to the actual website, and I found the deal was even better. Um, and another thing is with American Express, if you're, if you're a Platinum Card member, they have a fine resorts and hotels. Have you guys heard of that? Mm-hmm. So then what they do is they give you a credit. If you book through that website, they give you a credit at the hotel, plus breakfast every morning for two is always included, a late 4 p.m. checkout, um, an early check-in at noon. So there's also cool perks. And that's the American Express Platinum. But this is not, you know, an ad or anything by any sense. But we just like to use what works for us. So tell me, what are your, like, your go-to websites? If people want to write them down right now, what would you say are, like, your top three go-to websites with traveling? I love Expedia, but I'm biased because I have the Expedia credit card. <laughs> I didn't even know they had a card. Oh with gosh. Citibank. I mean, I love Expedia because I'm able to navigate through the system and they always offering different perks especially when you sign up as Expedia member so when you sign up you use uh, your rewards number to purchase hotel flights or anything you're earning points that you can redeem for Expedia so one time when I went out of the country I had enough points just with Expedia my hotel was free so you got to Remember those avenues as well, not only with the credit card companies, but also with the search engines, they offer rewards program as well. So I love Expedia. (laughs) No, I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember Mm Hotels.com has the same thing. I was able to purchase our room the other night. We had to stay at a hotel for a night. My family did. And it was $5. And it was just taxes. Mm -hmm. Because what happened was I booked through them. And if you stay for 10 nights, you get one night for free. And they just average it out based on what you paid for those 10 nights. So I was able to get a five-star hotel for absolutely free. So I totally agree. What about you? 
Um, Kiwi.com, just because it's so flexible, like it'll show me the cheapest flight coming and going. Um, Secretflying.com, theflightdeal.com, because both of those show like, um, ch- they'll show like cheap flights from like anywhere you can click on. Even if you're not in the U.S., like it'll um, show you like U.S., um, Europe, like anywhere you are and where you want to go to. Like it'll say like, like you were saying, like fly to Venice or fly to like Paris, fly to China, and it'll show you like cheap flights and it'll even show you like where it's coming from and like even the dates, it'll even break it down for you. So like if you don't want to look yourself, like it's already showing you like the groups, the dates that it's the cheapest. So I love it. I think key to those things is planning ahead. You know what I mean? And looking at your schedule and saying, all right, I'm going to travel during these dates. Let me begin to make plans. Mm -hmm. Let me see if this is during the off season. Let me check these websites. And I don't know if you guys think this is true or not, but is is it true that um, that companies or what or airlines increase the price as long as you check it over and over again to see what the numbers are or no? I think that is true. So okay. when I do it, I always try to do it in like a private window on my computer mm-hmm. so then they can't like <laughs> put cookies in it. Or <laughs> I will go back and I will like erase all the cookies and like try to delete all the you history. You're not joking. <laughs> <laughs> She's like savage. Yeah. Yeah. I do the same thing. I think it is with the cookies. They There's a way that they can track and see how often you're searching for that flight. Yeah. So definitely delete your cookies. <laughs> yes, delete those cookies. Okay. All right, let's go ahead to the Ask Heather section of the show. travel i'm gonna go do my research for this hawaii trip but because it needs to be free but um what is the best credit card for rewards that does not limit you to only one airline it really just depends because there's so many different cards out there you have to factor in if you want to pay the annual fee or if you do not Mm -hmm. so that's really going to separate what you really want to do um as i stated i have the expedia with Citibank, and there is an annual fee, but I love it because I earn like double and triple points certain times of the year just for daily purchases, everyday purchases, excuse me. So when I purchase my gas and my groceries, I'm earning double or triple points. Now, if I got the rewards card that was uh, zero annual fee, I wouldn't have that perk. So you really have to do your research to see exactly how fast you want to earn these perks and what exactly is your goal. If you just want to travel and there's no set time frame, then look for those credit cards that do not have an annual fee. And if you do want to travel a lot expeditedly, expeditedly, then definitely get the annual fee. I love that. No, that's good. Um, I With my card, I, as I mentioned, I love the American Express Platinum, and I also like the Gold card, too, because with the Platinum card, I get a $200 airline credit in addition to all these other perks as well. So um, I found that that one works. But what I found for myself that works is it's actually cheaper if I don't just use my miles um, from or my points, but I transfer my points to miles. Have you guys mm-hmm. ever done that mm-hmm. and found that it was actually better if you mm-hmm. just go to like Delta.com or if you go through your credit mm-hmm. card, transfer the points over, and then you get more bang for your buck that right. way too. So what about you? Um I don't think that it, there's really, like, one specific card. I think it depends on, like, what area of the country you live in. So, like, if you live in Atlanta, then I think you should get, like, the Delta card because, like, they fly there often and you can earn points, like, really fast. Like, I think if you spend $1,000 and they're going to give you 50,000 points, and that's already, like, enough to go to Hawaii. Yeah. So, and then if you live, like, somewhere that Southwest flies off and you need to have the Southwest card because they fly to, like, Jamaica, they go to Mexico. So, it, I think it really just depends on, like, what area of the country you live in. That's a, that's a great answer. All right, another great question. Safety tips for a single person, which is real. Mm-hmm. I mean, are you guys, are you single? Yes. Are right, you single? Are you single? I have a boyfriend. Okay, wait. so you're traveling, I mean, essentially with friends or by yourself. Have you, you guys traveled alone? Yes. Okay, so tell me what have you found has been a good safety tip? Now, some people are opposed to this, but when I travel solo, I do stay in hostels. Oh, wow. (laughs) My niece does that, too. But it's like $10 a day, right? Some are like $10 a day. And then just like with the different classes of hotels, there's the different classes of hostels. And the reason why I stay in hostels is because you can have that kinship. If I'm traveling by myself, I don't want to stay by myself. And staying in a hostel allows me to interact and meet other people who are also traveling by themselves. So that's something that works for me. How do you find out about hostels? (laughs) Hostels.com. That's great. There's so many different websites. If you're on Instagram, um, you can go to hostels.com. You can just type in hashtag hostels, and you'll see all these different hostels that'll pop up. You're very bold, (laughs) because I probably ain't going to stay at nobody's hostel. I mean, I think that's amazing that how my assistant's like that. I'm like, where are you going? What are you doing? But yeah. It works for me. um, But 
money saved on one trip you can use on another trip. So that's my motto. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So what, so that helps you. That's a safety tip for you by staying amongst other people. Staying amongst other people. I don't, tend to venture off at night, especially not by myself, because I solo travel as a woman. So you do have to take into consideration the dangers. Um, So if I'm doing something, I'm making sure I'm on a scheduled tour with a group. I don't venture off by myself. Definitely not at nighttime. Just don't go hiking by yourself in the middle of the night. I would not Trying to go pray in some mountain, I hear. (laughs) I mean, Jesus hears you from the the hostel. Okay? (laughs) Stay in the hostel. All right, what about you? What are some safety tips? Um... I think just, like, the same things that you would do, like, if you're at home, because, like, you go to the mall by yourself at home, or you go to, like, the grocery store by yourself, so I just think, like, the same thing, like, be smart, like, don't just be, like, on your phone, not looking where you're walking, um, just basically use the same common sense that you would use, like, going anywhere, so just watch your surroundings. I think the phone is a really big thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, our security always tells me that. He's like, when you're walking to your car, don't look down at your phone. Look up, be aware, be alert of what's going on. So I think more than anything is we have to make sure that we're led by the Holy Spirit. I think that's the best safety tip because he's saying, I will protect you. I will lead you. I will guide you. I will show you which way to go. So absolutely, we do practical things, um, but in letting him lead us. So if he's leading us to a certain place, there's a reason why we're going there. And I believe that it's travel is great, but I believe that it's a cool way to also reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think there's just something powerful about, and it opens up your mind because it mm-hmm. makes you see how selfish we can be at time, at times, and especially in America. I mean, I've seen it. I go to Ethiopia and other countries and I'm like, man, those kids have been working since they're like three. You know what I mean? And I'm looking at my son at four. I'm like, what you going to do? You know what I mean? You need to go to Ethiopia and see how those kids work. So before we close, I want you to share how we can find you. And, and I know you have a book as well. Yes, my book is called The Secrets of a Savvy Traveler. It is available on Amazon, and it teaches you how to travel the world on a budget. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at MS Savvy Traveler. Awesome. Do you share a lot of tips and stuff like that there? I do. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Or what about you? Um, you can find me at my blog. It is F-R-O-M-D-I-A-M-W-I-T-H-L-O-V-E.com. So from dimewithlove.com. And um, my Instagram is the same as well, from Dime With Love. And I share lots of travel tips, like um, like luxury travel on a budget, basically. So I love mm-hmm. that. I love that. I think it's amazing that you guys, especially single women, are taking advantage to travel the world and do all those different things. And um, we're just praying for you. We're supporting. We're cheering you guys on. And I pray that people grab a hold of some of your guys' tips and start applying them. I know I'm going to start applying them as soon as we wrap this show, okay? <laughs> well, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And tune in next Saturday at 6.30 p.m. on The Heather Lindsay Show. <laughs>